Hi, everybody. Okay, so I don't know why it's doing this, but it's um, it's not letting me flip it sideways the way I used to, so it might just be a new setting. And um, but we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this. So hopefully, um, hi mom, how are you doing? Does the video look right to you as you're watching? It's the right direction. I'm having to have my phone tip the other way. So um, anyway, oh. There is my cute Scotty. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I think I think they. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Uh -huh. I needed that. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was a fun little peekaboo from Scott. So I'm I'm not sure. I may have to sit back a little further for you to see the books, but um, I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe they've changed the. Uh, the way they're doing um, Facebook Live. So anyway, welcome to um, Story Time, Stories with Miss Lori Stories, as we say. Um, it is Tuesday, and hey, hi boys. Um, thanks for the tile, bringing the tile down this morning, guys. So um, uh, we're going to um, read a couple books about, um, about some animals. Um, hi, Jackson, I'm glad to see you. Um, because we were talking about Earth Day, so yesterday we talked, we drew the Earth. Today I'm going to read a couple books about animals, and we're going to, um, we're going to learn how to draw a ladybug today, because ladybugs are all about spring. Um, so, hi Naomi, hi Esther. So the first book I'm going to read to you today is another Mo Willems book that I have called Don't Let the Pigeon Stay Up Late. Oh, the Kavasnikas are here. Hi guys, hi Reese. So this book is another one of Mo Willems' funny books, Don't Let the Pigeons Stay Up Late. And I'm going to tell you, Miss Lori has a habit of staying up late. People call me a night owl, which is funny because I was the owl teacher. So maybe I am kind of a, a night owl. So here we go. Oh, good, it's you. Listen, it's getting late and I need to brush my teeth. Can you do me a favor? Don't let the pigeons stay up late. First of all, I'm not even tired. That definitely sounds like it's me. In fact, I'm in the mood for a hot dog party. What do you say? A hot dog party? I don't think I've ever had a hot dog party. No? Hm. I hear there's a good show about birds on TV tonight. Should be very educational. How about five more minutes? Come on, what's five minutes in the grand scheme of things? Oh, I had one little boy that used to say, I need my nighttime drink. He would always try to make bedtime go longer. Oh, he's yawning. What? What? Do you ever say that when it's bedtime? But I'm not tired. You know, we never get to talk anymore. Tell me about your day. These are all good ploys. Oh, I've got a great idea. We could count the stars. That's a good idea. Look, Sue even already put stars on there. Can I have a glass of water? Studies show that pigeons hardly need any sleep at all. It's the middle of the day in China. Hey, hey, ho, ho, this pigeon here just won't go. Please, my bunny wants to stay up. You can't say no to a bunny, can you? Look at that bunny, you guys. It's Knuffle Bunny. He has a Knuffle Bunny. Yum! Okay, that was not a yawn. I was just stretching. I'm yawn, 100% awake. You haven't heard me, the yawn, last of me. Zzz. Great work, thanks. And now Pigeon is dreaming about that hot dog party that he wanted to have. Good night. Do you ever say any of those things to your parents when you they want you to go to bed? 
I'm not tired. I need some water. Hi, Wani. Hi, Brenda. Well, when you grow up, you can go to bed whenever you want, but then you still have to sometimes get up in the morning when you don't want to. That's my problem. So, the next book I'm going to read you is, Hi Pam, is by another author we've read before. This is a book by Eric Carl, and it's called The Grouchy Ladybug. Look at that ladybug's grouchy face. Isn't that funny? I don't usually think about ladybugs being grouchy because they're so helpful. I love ladybugs. Ladybugs don't bite me. I like them in my garden. So, The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up and a friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. So this is the one that's on the left and this is the one that's on the right. It says the one on the right is the grouchy one. So point to the one on the right. Yeah, this is the grouchy one. And these tiny little bugs on the leaf, I'm gonna come closer, those are called aphids. And if those get on your plants, those are a bug that we don't like in our garden because they will eat um, the plant and we don't like that. So for a butterfly to come and eat the aphids is really good. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. Oh, we can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're mine, all mine, said the grouchy ladybug. Um, or do you want to fight me for them? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other bug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped by, looked less sure of itself. Ah, uh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on someone bigger? I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew away. So this is the grouchy one. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Ah, uh, you're not big enough to fight, said it, and the ladybug flew off. At seven o'clock, it met a stag beetle. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle. But it opened its big jaws, and the ladybug said, Oh, you're not big enough to fight, the grouchy ladybug said and flew off. At eight o'clock, the grouchy ladybug found a praying mantis. Hey, you, he said, want to fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the ladybug and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. <laughs> hey, you want to fight, said the grouchy ladybug. Stretch, the lobster said, if you insist, and stretched its claws. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, start, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 12 noon, a boa constrictor, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Ah, oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? <laughs> if you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. They're getting bigger and bigger. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? Ho, 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 if you insist, said the gorilla beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew away. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? Oh, if you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering his huge horn. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. 
At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the flippers of the whale, Hey, you want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, Hey, you, you want to fight? But it was just the fin, but it got no answer, so it flew on. At quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey, you want to fight? And the whale's tail gave the grouchy ladybug a slap. And it flew across the sea, across the land. And at six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where he had started. Ah, uh, uh, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. You're welcome. Soon all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You are welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon. So there's the fireflies. And the leaf doesn't have any more aphids on it, and both ladybugs have full tummies. I wonder if the grouchy ladybug was grouchy because somebody let him stay up too late. Hmm. I wonder, because sometimes when I stay up too late, I'm grouchy the next day. So, next, it's time to draw. Do you have your drawing stuff? If you don't have your drawing stuff, go ahead and get it. I'm going to show you what we're going to draw. We're going to draw a ladybug today. You can make yours grouchy or not grouchy. It's up to you. This is what I drew before, so I could show you what it'll look like. And I used my watercolors to color him in. But I'm going to take a piece of cardstock and I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm going to show you how to draw a ladybug. And for those of you joining late, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the video, but it's making me have my phone vertical instead of um, horizontal, so it's kind of weird. Anyway, here I go. I have my magical Sharpie and I'm going to make what looks like a big upside down U like this, a big one, because I want a really big ladybug, okay? And then I'm gonna put a line right across the bottom. Okay, so big, hey Emmett. So a big upside down U and a line across the bottom, okay? Then on the inside, I'm gonna do a smaller upside down U. So this is the ladybug's body and this is the ladybug's head, okay? Now a ladybug is an insect, so how many legs is it gonna have? Yep, it's gonna be six legs. So we're gonna go down here. I'm gonna start from the end. I'm gonna go six lines down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm just gonna do a little curved line and that looks like his little feet. And these ones I'm gonna to do to the left side and these ones I'm gonna to do to the right side. But you could even just do a little ball at the bottom if you wanted to. So now our, our ladybug has a body, a head, and six legs. So the next step we're gonna do is add antennas. So this I'm gonna do kind of a swirly line. I'm gonna start at the top of the head, I'm gonna go up, and then I'm gonna make a swirly line like that. Looks a little bit like a cinnamon roll, you might call it a twirl. And then I'm gonna do another antenna next to that one. I'm gonna go up, and the same thing, I'm just gonna do a swirly line. And they don't have to match exactly. In fact, you could do one straight and one twirly, or you could just do two straight ones. Okay, so that has are his antenna. Now we're gonna do two big eyes. Do two circles for his eyes, like that. And then this is where you can get funny. You can do the eyes where they're both in the middle like this, or you could put one eyeball down here and one eyeball up here. That looks kind of silly, doesn't it? I like it. Now, on the side of his head over here, I'm gonna do 
a curved line like I did before, like a U. And these are his little cheeks. Well, you could do full circles if you want to, but I'm just doing little half circles. And then we're gonna draw a smile from one to the other. It's a really big smile. Isn't he cute? Okay, now our ladybug is done, right? No, ladybugs have spots, right? So we're gonna draw up some half circles like this. We're gonna do like this. So this will be black. And then I'll do another one here. And you could do big circles or little circles. You could do whatever you want. I'm just gonna do, I think I'm gonna be able to fit five on here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then when you go to paint in your um, ladybug, oh, or you can use markers, markers would work really nice too. Even crayon would work really nice. But when you go to paint them in, you'll start with, you can start with any color you want. I'm starting with some black up here. Paint that guy in and paint this guy in and get some more paint and paint this guy in. So now he's starting to look a little more like a ladybug, right? Because now you're seeing the dots. And when you paint on an easel like this, sometimes you get some drippies, drippies. Let me go back and grab those. If you paint straight on down on the, um, if you lay your paper down, it won't drip so much. But I do like this easel because it's easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. And maybe I'll make his little feet black too down here. His little feetsies down here. One, two, three, four, five. How many legs does an insect have? That's right. Hey, Robin. So now in the book that we read, or in the, in the one that I did before, I made his, I wanted his face to, or her face to um, stand out from the red, so I made it blue, but you could make that any color you wanted, okay? So um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the red first while I think about what color I wanna do her face or his face. You could also, we've, we've added stuff like eyebrows and eyelashes. If you want to do that to your ladybug, you can. And you can also, we've learned a few different insects now. So if you wanted to draw a picture where some of them are all together, then you could do that too. We've drawn an ant and a butterfly, um, and we've drawn, what else have we drawn that's an insect? Have we done a bumblebee yet? That would be another good one. I have a really cool bush outside that's um, got purple flowers on it, and the bumblebees just love it, and they are buzzing all over it. It's really, really nice. So my ladybug is now red. So now I get to, do, and then I'm gonna do her little cheeks red too, like this, cute. And then now I get to pick what color to do her, her face. And I think I am going to pick, <gasps> Harper, are you watching? Harper, do you have a new baby? Hi, so excited for your new sister. I decided I'm gonna paint my ladybug's face green today. So like I said, you can leave your ladybug just with whatever you drew her with, or you can use some watercolors to color in, or you can use crayons or markers or colored pencils. There's so many options. You could even draw a big leaf and draw two, cat, two, hung, or two um, ladybugs on it and you could draw one is grouchy, and you could draw one is happy, and it could be like our story, The Hungry Caterpillar, right? I mean, The Grouchy Ladybug. Look what just happened. I made this one a grouchy ladybug. Look at those eyebrows. Now I have a grouchy ladybug, and I have a silly, goofy ladybug. Cute? Okay, <clears throat> good job. Okay, so the next book I'm going to read to you today, I'm gonna move this back a little bit is called The Watermelon Seed, and this book was written by Greg Pazzoli. And what kind of an animal do you suppose that is eating watermelon? I think you'll see a little bit better when I start reading. The Watermelon Seed, look at this, is, ooh, look at that. That looks just like the inside of a watermelon, doesn't it? 
The Watermelon Seed by Greg Pazzoli. I love watermelon. Chomp, chomp, chomp. It's the best. Look, it's an alligator. Ever since I was a teeny tiny baby crocodile, it's been my favorite. Chomp, chomp, slurp, chomp. I like it for breakfast. I like it for lunch. I like a big salty slab for dinner. I love it for dessert. I love watermelon. Look, he's throwing that piece in the air. You think he'll catch it in his mouth? Gulp. He has a funny look on his face. I just swallowed a seed. I swallowed a seed. It's growing in my guts. Soon vines will come out of my ears. Oh no. Do watermelon seeds grow in your tummy? My stomach will stretch. My skin will turn pink. I don't want to be in a fruit salad. Somebody please help me. <laughs> oh no. I can feel it growing inside of me. It's happening right now. My stomach feels funny. Burp. Look what went foot up. Oh, here's the seed. That was too close. No more melon for me. Never again. He was so worried that watermelon was going to grow in his tummy. Well, maybe just a teeny tiny bite. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Hi, Nick. He ate the whole thing, didn't he? Do you think that watermelon seeds would grow in your tummy if you ate one? I used to think that when I was a kid. Somebody once told me too, if, if you swallow your bubble gum, that it stays in your tummy forever. I don't think that's true, but I don't know for sure. Okay guys, so um, today we have read, Don't Let the Pigeon Stay Up Late, The Grouchy Ladybug, who probably stayed up too late, and The Watermelon Seed. And now it's time for us to read some more in our adventures of Jack and Annie in the Magic Tree House. We are currently in ancient China, and we talked about ancient means long ago. And they are wearing the dress of ancient China, and they are looking for a book or a story that's written on bamboo, okay? Chapter three is called The Silk Weaver, Weaver, sorry. The Silk Weaver, Weaver. Jack and Annie kept walking across the pasture toward the road. Annie stopped when they neared the farmhouse. We have to find the silk weaver and give her a message, she said. Let's do it on our way back, said Jack. I'm worried about finding the Imperial Library. But what if we don't have time, said Annie. We promised and he's so nice. Well, Nicole, I'm glad you like watermelon, but don't swallow the seeds in case it grows in your tummy. Okay, he said, but let's find her fast. And remember to keep your head down so no one will notice us. Jack and Annie bowed their heads and they headed towards the house. Remember they have those hats on that kind of, if they bowed their heads down, no one would really be able to see their faces. As they got closer, Jack peeked out from under his hat. An ox pulled a cart filled with hay. Men hoed the ground. Women pushed the wheelbarrows high with grain. There, said Annie, she pointed to an open porch where a young woman was weaving a cloth on a womb. That must be her. Annie ran to the silk weaver. Jack looked around to see if anyone was watching. Luckily, all the farm workers seemed too busy to notice. Still looking around carefully, Jack walked toward the porch. Annie was already talking to the silk weaver. What did he say? The young woman asked. Her voice was soft but strong. Her eyes glowed with happiness. He said you should meet him in the field at twilight, said Annie. He's so handsome. Yes, he is, the silk weaver gave Annie a shy smile. Then she reached down to a basket near her loom and picked out a small ball of yellow thread. It was very brave of you to bring the message, she said. Please accept this silk thread as a thank you. She handed Annie the ball of silk. It's beautiful, said Annie. Feel, she handed it to Jack. The thread was as smooth, was smooth and soft. How do you make silk, said Jack. It is made from the cocoon of silkworms, said the weaver. Cocoons, what? 
We just talked about cocoons and chrysalis, didn't we? Really, worms, that's neat, said Jack. Let me write that down. He reached into his sack. Please don't, said the silk weaver. The making of silk in China's most valuable secret. Anyone who seals the secret will be arrested. The dragon king will put you in jail. So here is a picture of the silk weaver and she's handing over a ball of this silk thread. And this is a black and white picture, but what color is the thread? It's yellow, right? Y-E-L-L-O-W spells yellow. So, oops, said Jack. He dropped the ball of silk into his sack. I think you better leave quickly, whispered the silk weaver. You've been seen. Jack looked over his shoulder. A man was pointing at them. Let's go, he said. Bye, said Annie. Good luck on your date. Thank you, the silk weaver said. Come on, said Jack. They hurried away from the silk weaver. Stop, someone shouted. Run, said Annie. Chapter four is called The Great Wall. In China, in ancient China, um, the people of China built this huge wall out of rocks. It's really high and really, really long. In fact, you can see it if you're an astronaut in space. It's so big. It's kind of like the pyramids, how we're not sure how they did it because it was so long ago. Jack and Annie ran around the farmhouse. At the back was an ox cart filled with bags of grain. There was nobody around. The shouting behind them got louder. Jack and Annie looked at each other, then dived into the back of the wooden cart. They buried themselves in the middle of the bags of grains. Jack's heart pounded at this as the shouts came closer. He held his breath and waited for the people to leave. Suddenly, the cart started moving. It lurched forward. Someone was driving them away. Jack and Annie peeked over the bags. Jack saw the back of the driver. He was calmly steering the ox cart over the dirt road. They were on their way to the walled city. Jack and Annie ducked down again. This is great, said Annie. All we have to do is jump out when we get to the city. So now I'm gonna show you this picture and it's calling this an ox cart. Do you know why it's called an ox cart? It's called an ox cart because an ox or oxen are the ones who pull it. And so they're very strong animals and a wagon full of grain would be very heavy. So it needs a very strong animal to pull it. Yep, said Jack softly. Then we'll find the Imperial Library, find the book, and get back to the Magic Tree House. No problem, whispered Annie. Whoa, the cart slowly came to a halt. Jack held his breath. He heard voices and the heavy tramping of feet. Lots of feet. He and Annie peeked out. Oh man, he whispered. A long line of men was crossing the road in front of the cart. They carried axes, shovels, and hoes. Guards marched alongside them. Let's find out what's happening, said Jack. He reached into his sack and pulled out the china book. Pushing his glasses into place, he found a, a picture of the workers. He read, The Dragon King forced many of his subjects to start building a wall to protect China from invaders. Later, emperors made the wall even longer. Finally, it stretched 3,700 miles long along China's border. The Great Wall of China is the longest structure ever built, even to this very day. Wow, the Great Wall of China, said Jack. I've heard of that, said Annie. Well, who hasn't? Those guys are going to work on it right now. Just then, somebody grabbed Jack and Annie. They looked up. It was the driver of the cart. Who are you? He asked angrily. We, uh, Jack didn't know what to say. The man's gaze fell upon the open book in Jack's hands. His mouth dropped. He let go of Jack and Annie. Slowly, he reached out and touched the book. He looked back at Jack and Annie with wide eyes. What is this? He said. Okay, that was two chapters. So I have a joke for you today. I saw this one yesterday. I'm going to share it with you. So do you guys know what if I do this? Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Can you do that? Peekaboo. Okay, so what do you, what happened, where do you take somebody who has a peekaboo accident. So someone's playing peekaboo and they get hurt. Where do you take that person who has a peekaboo accent, accident? You take him to the ICU. Ah, punny. Okay, that was my joke of the day. I know it was bad, but it's sort of funny. Anyway, peekaboo ICU, have a great day. Um, it's a beautiful day here. It's spring. Uh, remember, tomorrow is Earth Day. Maybe you guys could pick out something green or blue in your in your uh, clothes tomorrow to wear 
to celebrate Earth Day. And I hope you've had fun um, drawing with me today and listening to our stories. And um, maybe even drawing a ladybug with me today. Did you draw a ladybug? Did you draw a grouchy ladybug or a happy one? Feel free to put your, um, your pictures in the comments. This will be posting on my page in just a minute or so. And then you can uh, go back and comment on it. Okay, have a great day, guys. Love ya. Bye.